during the phylogeny, um, they shift those opposite sets they're expressing. Normally, it's more for like from the short to the medium to the long wave like opposite set. That's what you see in many species. So what you will see in this graph is on the y-axis is the relative opposite expression. Uh, on the x-axis, you have four different um, time points, so seven days, 14 days, post-hatching, six months, and the age of older than one year. And now we look for each opposite of how the expression changes over time. So you see SWS1, which uh, absorbs UV light. It's only expressed at very young life stages, but then it's not expressed um, as they reach older um, age. So at six months, one year, it's not expressed anymore. SWS2 b which absorbs light at a slightly longer wavelength, is lowly expressed in, in um, early stages, not expressed in adults again. SWS2 a on the other hand, is lowly expressed in early life, but then impression, uh, expression increases, and it's the only single cone opsin expressed in adult fish in this species. The double cones, RH2B, um, expressed in young fish, that again expression goes down. RH2A is quite dominant in early life stage, but also gets um, low. And LWS, which absorbs light, uh, light in the, the red part uh, of the light spectrum, is a relatively low expression, but then it takes over and is the dominant um, um, double cone opsin in adult fish. So you can see that there's a shift towards um, this long opsin uh, set. However, in the derived species, there's a first it looks quite similar, but there are some differences, and I want to <coughs> focus on two time points. So six months and um, in the ancestor species, and in age of more than one year in the <coughs> derived species. What you can see is that in this time point, so there's SWS2B and A expressed in the single cones, the double cones, just like RH2A and LWS at um, equal proportions. And this is exactly what we see in the derived species at much older age. So you could say that the phenotype of opsin expression in the derived species, more than one year, resembles more like a juvenile state uh, in the ancestral species. So you could say um, that the derived species is kind of a uh, pedomorphic version of the ancestor species. Okay, so now we want to see how robust are those um, expression patterns or can we interfere with those. Now we'll start talking about um, phenotypic plasticity. What we did, we took those two species, we exposed them to four different light treatments, one blue and one red with a very narrow peak at um, uh, 405 nanometers in the blue treatment and 635, so far shifted to the red and the red treatment. But we also had two more broad spectrum light treatments, cold and warm white, which are slightly shifted towards blue and red wavelength. Um, we kept those fish in these conditions for two weeks, and afterwards we again measured the opsin expression. So this is like a similar graph, but what you can see now on the x-axis is not um, different time points, but those are the four different light treatments. And they're like ordered from more short towards longer wavelength. And <coughs> so now the like the lines connecting those data points, you can um, kind of see, see as the reaction norms. So what we see, if we put fish in the flu um, uh, environment, for example, they express a lot of SWS1, whereas in the red treatment, SWS1 is not expressed at all. And you can see this nice gradient, like the longer the wavelengths, um, uh, the longer the light spectrum gets, um, the less SWS1 is expressed. SWS2B to, to is slightly expressed in all of them, but not really, and SWS2A, shows also striking pattern that's not expressed at all in any of those three treatments, but it's only expressed in the red treatment. In the double cones, this is a similar thing for RH2B, it's not expressed at all in the red treatment, but it gets expressed in all the others. RH2A is kind of unaffected by the light treatment, and LWS uh, also slightly increases with um, longer wavelength. So this is for the ancestral species, we do see plasticity, especially in those extreme environments. And in the derived species, you basically see the same thing. There's slightly different proportions of which opsins are expressed. But again, in the red treatment, especially, we see that um, SWS 2B is much higher expressed. SWS um, 1 is not expressed at all. And also the same for RH 2B. So what we see is that in the age, okay, sorry, I forgot to mention, those were fish with an age of 14 days post hatching. So at this very young um, stage of life, both species do show plasticity. But now we wanted to add, uh, we wanted to see what happens at older age. So we took fish that were six months old, again, put them in those light treatments for two weeks, and measured the opposite expression again. And in the ancestral species, we see a 
totally different pictures. As you can see here, optimal expression is not affected at all by any of those light treatments. But then when we look at the derived species, we still find plasticity. So again, most strikingly in the red treatment, you can see here, it's the only one expressing SWS2A compared to all the other treatments, and also RH2B is only expressed, uh, it's not expressed at all in the red treatment, but in all the others. So we conclude that the opposite expression is fixed at the age of six months in the ancestral species, but in the derived species, we still find plasticity um, uh, in six months. Okay, so, <coughs> so what we see is that phenotypic plasticity in opposite expression is maintained in two um, much older um, stages, in, uh, life stages, maybe even to adulthood. So how can we explain it? So we think that, um, like I mentioned already before, the light um, environment is shifted towards shorter wavelengths, so towards blue light in this, um, in this crater lake. So there might be, um, there might be adaptation of the kind of the opposite sets they express as adults, which are like more blue shifted. This might be an adaptation towards this um, uh, blue shifted light environment. And then maybe there's some, um, there's some constraints. So whenever they express this more juvenile phenotype, which is like the represents the juvenile state in the ancestral species. So that as long as they express this set, it might also be that um, they are still showing this phenotypic plasticity. So this might be a byproduct for the selection um, for this medium wavelength option set. Another explanation might be, um, so I didn't tell you the full um, picture before. This lake is much clearer than the other lake, but also um, during seasons, the visibility in the light environment might change quite a bit. So due to algae blooms or heavy rainfall, the light conditions can vary quite a lot. But also, this lake again, is much deeper than the other lake, so of course, with depth, um, the light spectrum changes. So you can say that there's both spatially and also temporally heterogeneous light environment. And so it might, it might be that um, maintaining phenotypic plasticity into adulthood might be an adaptation to this heterogeneous light environment. So this would mean that um, there is really um, selection to maintain this plasticity, which would be uh, quite exciting. Okay, so to sum this up, we have two species, one ancestor, one derived species. They do show differential opposite expression, and we do find a heterochronic shift um, in the derived species. So the ancestor species shifts from this short, the medium to the long wavelength opposite set um, during ontogeny, whereas this derived species kind of gets stuck in this medium um, opposite um, set, so the development is kind of delayed, and they maintain this um, more juvenile phenotype into adulthood. And also when we look at which life stages are still um, plastic, so with this box, these are all um, stages at which those species are plastic. And you can see that um, the ancestor species loses um, plasticity much earlier, which, but it's maintained in the derived species. So we do see a heterochronic shift in both oxygen expression and but also in phenotypic plasticity. So with that, um, I'd like to finish and I'd like to thank my uh, collaborators and